Another day, another state, and today we're going to talk about Missouri. I'm your host Andrew, and here are your top 10 Missouri scary urban legends. At a number 10 spot, we have Zombie Road. Hidden away in eastern Missouri is Rock Hollow Trail, otherwise known as Zombie Road. It was first built in late 1860s to provide a way to the Meramec River, into the Glencoe, and various other railroad tracks. However, as the years went by, this road became notorious for being extremely haunted. Many who travel down this road claim that they're being watched by shadows that lurk behind the woods surrounding the entire road. And there's so much more that happened here. One story is that of a zombie killer who is a psychopathic hermit who lived in these woods and would attack young lovers who were just looking for a place to be alone. And to add to all of that, it's really no surprise this place is haunted because it was built directly on top of the largest Native American burial grounds. Not only are there just natives here, but many were buried here during the Civil War. So this place has been haunted for generations. At our number nine spot, we have Landers Theater. The Landers Theater in Springfield, Missouri has a very troubled past, which is the reason why many believe this place is still haunted. Opening in 1909, it didn't take long for tragedy to strike this place because 11 years later in 1920, a fire engulfed much of this theater, which claimed the life of one of the janitors. And he's one of the spirits many performers see, claiming that he stands on top of the balconies watching as they rehearse. Sometime after, that, a baby fell down to their death from the second story of the theater. And since that tragedy, many will hear a crying baby in the audience even after hours. And the most famous spot of the theater is the area that separates the first and the second floor balconies. Here many visitors claim to be tapped on their shoulders and whispered at. And this is all because in the 1940s, someone was stabbed to death here. And now their spirit is said to stay here. Nowadays, the theater remains open and if you really want to see if it's haunted, I would recommend booking a ticket right Right now. At our number 8 spot, we have Momo the Monster. Momo the Monster, otherwise known as the Missouri Monster, is a 7 feet tall hairy beast that has terrorized the residents of Louisiana, Missouri since the 1970s. The first sighting of the creature took place in July 1971 when Joanne Mills and Mary Rines spotted the beast up the Mississippi River, describing its large stature and glowing orange eyes. After that report, many family dogs would be found dead along the Mississippi River, and this is when two young boys and their sister spotted the creature holding one of the dogs in its hand. Many of the eyewitnesses claim that the creature reeked of rotten flesh and had growls similar to a bear. Before long, the news media picked up on the story, attracting curiosity seekers and monster hunters from around the country. At number 7 spot, we have the Joplin Spook Light. The Spook Light, otherwise known as the Joplin Spook Light, is a weird phenomenon when there is a supposed ghost light that appears in an area known as the Devil's Promenade, which borders the states of Missouri and Oklahoma. Basically, Basically, when you travel along this road, you may see a mysterious orb. And although it has many stories about it, the amount of photos that contain the light is enough to make anyone think that this isn't something normal. One legend of the light talks about a local miner who went back to his home, only to discover that his whole family went missing and his cabin was burned down to the ground. Now his ghost is walking spook light road with a lantern in his hand searching for his family, explaining the light. At a number 6 spot, we have the Ozark Howler. The Ozark Howler, otherwise known as the Nightshade Bear or the Devil cat is a mysterious creature that lurks in remote areas of Missouri. This beast is a very intimidating predator, considering it has a body of a bear, stocky legs, glowing red eyes, and even sharp horns. It would be the last thing you want to encounter on your hiking trip. Sightings of this creature have been reported since the 1950s, and between 2005 and 2010, the howler was reported by many, many more people. The creature got its name from its iconic howl, which is described to be a very deep and the combination of a wolf's howl, an elk's buggle, and the laugh of a hyena. So however you want to imagine that, that's how it would sound like. In more recent years, many people are believing that this creature is nothing more than an eastern cougar or even a black bear. Or perhaps even a hybrid of both. And this is because the creature has yet to be photographed. But at least they howl, so if they do exist, you have ample time to not get pummeled by this beast. In the hump of our list, we have Phelps Grove Park. The history of Phelps Grove Park is both long and fascinating. It served as both Governor John S. Phelps House and a tribal village for many Native American people. The park, which spans around 44 acres on East Bennett Street, is very old, but the spirit found inside of this park is much more recent. The story is that one night, a bride and the groom were strolling at this park in their carriage, when all of a sudden, the groom became jealous, causing the carriage to flip off the bridge upside down. This accident caused the bride to snap her neck, ending her life immediately. Now many locals have seen the ghost bride underneath the bridge, saying that she stands there with her right hand holding the hem of her dress as if she's about to take a step. Apparently, 
Apparently she appears there every evening, but if you try to get a closer look, she'll just vanish right in front of you. On our fourth spot, we have Drury University. Drury University in Springfield, Missouri is built right on top of Native American burial grounds. Need I say more? We've seen it in movies, we've heard it in stories. Building on top of native burial grounds is always bound to be a bad idea. Not only the concept of building over people's graves, but this kind of thing tends to have everlasting effects. One of the halls in the university, known as Smith Hall, was built in the grounds of old Victorian houses, where one girl passed away after trying to get her teddy bear in a fire. Now many students in the university claim to see this child walking around, and others claim that their stuffed animals move due to this child's ghost, but if that's the case, this is just another one of those Chucky and Annabelle situations. At our number three spot, we have Union Station. Union Station in Kansas City is a railroad station that transports both the living and the dead. Built in 1914, this station had millions going through it, which meant that a few deaths were expected to happen within. One of the notorious spirits found here is the ghost of a bank robber named Frank Nash, who along with four peace officers was killed during a rescue attempt. Those who are regulars at the station claim to see Nash's spirit around, saying that he is faceless, wearing a suit, tie, and polished shoes. At number two spot, we have the Headless Cobbler of Smollett Cave. A creature known as the Headless Cobbler would be spotted in Ava, Missouri, during the 1920s. Story goes that two young women were walking along Spring Creek at midnight when a man stepped out from the side of the road who appeared to have no head, shoes around his neck, and a Bible around his shoulder. Weird outfit choice, but when you have no head, I guess everything's a fashion statement. In the next year, two boys spotted the same thing when they were riding their horses along the same creek when they spotted a headless man floating above the ground. More recent sightings have been at Smollett Cave where he now hides out supposedly, and can be heard tapping away as he cobbles shoes. If you happen to see a single light coming from the cave at night, it's said to be the headless cobbler holding his lantern. At our number one spot, we have Lemp Mansion. The Lemp Mansion is considered to be one of the scariest locations in America, according to Travel Channel. In 1840, Lemp opened a small brewery not far from where the current Gateway Arch is now. It was the most prosperous companies in the region by 1879, and dominated the St. Louis beer market. After his death in August 1862, his son William took over and began major expansions, which only grew the company much more. However, the house would become a curse for their entire family. Inside of the home, there were three of the core family members who took their own life, and ever since, many claim that their spirits are bound to this home. In 1949, the mansion was sold off and transformed into a boarding house. It wasn't long before hauntings were reported. Witnesses claimed to see a boy who asked for someone to play with. There were also reports of inexplicable burning sensations, cold spots, slamming doors, and all sorts of other mysterious sounds. Well, these are the top 10 Missouri scary urban legends. What'd you guys think about this list? Leave a comment down below. I'm your host, Andrew, and I hope you guys have a scary day.